Hi guys, Tony Dubbed here and today I'm doing a video review on the Creative Stage 2.1. Now this isn't to be confused with the normal stage um, soundbar because this includes a dedicated subwoofer as well. Now what's quite special about this little um, sort of system is that it's not only designed to work with your TV with its inputs but it's also designed to work with your computer because you can place it pretty neatly under a monitor and uh, Creative uh, deemed this as an under monitor soundbar or a, a system. <laughs> Nevertheless, um, aside that, it's actually quite special because it comes in at £80 and that's very much affordable because a lot of people don't have a lot of money to spend on a soundbar. So for £80 or $80 if you're in the US, it seems like a pretty tempting option. So without further ado, let's get into this review and see if it's worth its price tag. First of all, let's talk about the build quality. So you've got a dedicated uh, subwoofer that connects uh, via a DC input to the actual main unit. And then the unit itself has a, a cable for power. Other than that, you're going to have to uh, connect up the uh, soundbar via uh, wired connections. And the connectivity options are pretty well that you've got auxiliary, um, uh, HDMI, that's TV arc, and you've got an optical input. Better still, you've also got Bluetooth connectivity, which you can see it's currently active right now, uh, so you can pair it up to your phone or uh, your TV if it supports Bluetooth. Within the box, you get a uh, remote control. It doesn't have batteries included, so you'll need to buy that. Um, in terms of the remote itself, it's you know pretty cheap feeling. It doesn't feel like a very much premium um, remote. However, the remote itself does provide a variety of options, and it's good to see that um, Creative haven't really skimped out over here. You can adjust the bass and treble um, change within a EQ preset EQ uh, profiles. Um, I personally found uh, music to be the best, at least for for me. Um, no matter if I was playing some Transformers or listening to music. And then of course you've got um, uh, sort of media controls as well over here which is kind of uh, kind of unique because most uh, remotes don't actually have dedicated media controls. You've also got wall mount plugs if you so wish to, to do it with uh, some screws and then you've got an auxiliary input as well. I also forgot that you've got a USB input so you can play back a USB uh, music uh, directly from, um, from the soundbar so just plug it in and, and play and you've got um, physical buttons over here, very basic controls over here if you were to ever lose the remote control so you can still operate it to a certain extent, um, well you can, it, you can control the soundbar to a certain extent. Now in terms of the remote itself just going through the uh, op and so the options over here, uh, you've got the input. Now you can see that the uh, little um, uh, LED over here is pretty much useful and uh, does exactly what it says on the tin. And you can see over here adjusting the volume or let's say muting it. It's very simple and very easy. One thing I did find is that um, in terms of the uh, the actual uh, display itself. It doesn't switch off as far as I could tell um, when I was using it other than, as you can see, it just dims. Uh, you can put it onto standby so you can see right here and that's how it looks like. So just bear that in mind if you're someone who's going to be sensitive to the LED lights uh, which will be present there. Uh, other than that, uh, nothing else really to, to mention uh, other than the fact that the Bluetooth works pretty, uh, pretty flawlessly. So now let's talk about the sound quality. Now unfortunately I'm not going to be able to play back some really cool movies and, and showcase this simply because of the copyright. Instead I'm going to play a non-copyright uh, music song via Bluetooth. Now I know that's not optimal because it doesn't support Bluetooth APTX or what have you, but it just gives you a rough idea of how the soundbar sounds like. And I'll link this down in the description below. So as you're able to hear, the actual uh, sound quality of the soundbar is pretty good for a under £100 um, system. Now what I'm going to do right now is also play the music but then disconnect the subwoofer so you guys can hear the difference that the subwoofer brings to the game.
So as you can hear, it's a lot better with that subwoofer roaring around. Now the total peak output is around 160 watts, which is plenty enough. Um, in terms of the actual overall volume, I mean, you know, 160 watts doesn't really mean anything um, to, to a lot of people. It is very powerful for you to be listening to this in a large living room without uh, much problem. Of course, it's never going to compete with massive um, sound bars out there, but at this price range, it does reach a very um, pleasing volume and one that doesn't distort at the very top end. So I must say, Creative have done a good job over here. So to summarize my thoughts in terms of the sound quality, I must say, the soundbar does a relatively good job at producing a pretty overall or sort of fun sounding signature. You've got a pretty punchy bass response and even though it does cut off at around 50 hertz or 45 odd hertz, the, the subwoofer gives you that extra oomph that you normally wouldn't get for around 100 pounds or maybe under 80 pounds you'll get systems that don't have a dedicated subwoofer. So that dedicated subwoofer is really uh, pleasing to the ears, at least for those who want to watch movies or even just listen to music as um, I just showed right here. In terms of the mid-range, it is recessed, it is pushed back. Uh, it's kind of a, to be expected at this price range, you're not going to get absolute um, crystal clear mids. That said, um, depending on the EQ settings that you choose and you can customize the treble, what I suggest is putting it to plus three or plus four in terms of the treble. It kind of boosts that sort of EQ and gives you that kind of artificial mix. You'll, you'll get vocals relatively well through this uh, through the system. In terms of the highs, again, they roll off, but they provide enough sort of sparkle at the top end for you to keep yourself kind of engaged while you're uh, listening to music or watching movies or you know watching the TV and, and listening to the news. So no complaints there. In terms of the uh, sound stage, now it is a little bit close sounding in comparison to other more expensive systems but yet again I'm very much impressed at this price range that the soundbar has a good instrument separation. Yes, it won't sound wide or sort of a deep soundstage that you'd um, normally want from a, a soundbar. However, its instrument separation is pretty good. I'm not going to say it's flawless because more expensive sets are a lot better than this. But again, at under £100, it's to be expected and Creatives One does come out on top versus other sets out there. So overall, what is my verdict of this soundbar? Well, as you might have known from the the tone of my review, it's all relative to price. And in this case, for £80 or $80 if you're in the US, I must say this Creative Soundbar is potentially the best soundbar you can find under $100 or £100. Not only because of its sound quality and characteristics, because of its dedicated uh, subwoofer, but also because it's got um, multiple different inputs, including Bluetooth connectivity, which makes it great for you know, pairing up uh, with your smartphone and just playing some music uh, while you're, I don't know, in the kitchen or, or whatever have you. And the fact that it's actually a very small, compact unit. And of course, the subwoofer adds an extra little um, piece to the, to the jigsaw, but the actual unit itself is very small, meaning that yes, you can fit it under a monitor, but also in terms of your TV or your TV cabinet, you're not going to have a problem uh, finding space for it. So overall, what Creative have created, uh, created over here is actually pretty impressive. I've won under £18, or under £100 even, I can't think of a better soundbar um, solution for either PC gamers or uh, people who are um, who have a, who have a TV. And I should bear in mind that when I talk about PC gamers, you're still going to have to connect this all over, like let's say optical. Um, it hasn't got like that DAC functionality, as far as I can tell. So you just bear that in mind that when I'm talking about PC gaming, I am very much talking about using it via your motherboard input and then bypassing the audio output via your motherboard or let's say um, um, via Bluetooth if you're on a laptop. So there we go guys, that's my honest review, independent review and unpaid review as always. If you like this review, make sure to give it a like, comment and let me know what you think is better or worse at under £100 or $100. I'll be very much intrigued to know and maybe even try and review it if I can. Um, and other than that, uh, favourite and share and subscribe, it always helps the channel grow, can't stress it enough. Alright guys, I've been totally dubbed, take care and bye bye.